window. Sir. What do you know of this Donovan? I've had him on the special attention list for some time. All right. He is one of their frontline men. CIA? No, sir. Donovan's attached to the Pentagon branch. A very experienced operator. Naval and military intelligence, coding, and personnel. What do you think he's doing here? Have you any idea why the Americans sent him? Are you asking my opinion, or is that a rhetorical question? Hmm? As you'll never fail to remind me, sir, I'm merely here to look after the admin side of our department. You are the creative thinking side. I'm asking your opinion. How do we know the Americans have sent him? He could be here on holiday. Oh, no, he couldn't. Why not? He was on vacation in Bermuda four days ago. Why change that for this? I take it your information is accurate, as usual. Uh, the Governor General was at school with me. I might have guessed. Come. The Donovan surveillance. Oh, thank you, Wendy. Recognize him? Shanna. But he was found dead. Exactly. So Donovan is on business. Get me the K red file. The combination? Sir. I'll do it. Creative side? Admin. This had better be private. Mrs. Langley, sir. Hi, Mrs. Langley. Hello. And how lovely to see you. Hello, Victor. Sherry? Gin and tonic? No, no, thank you. Oh, that really is very pleasant to see you here. I managed to get out of an extremely dull meeting. Victor? How's the boy? When are you going to bring him down to Clavering? Victor, stop being polite. Hmm? What's happened to Peter? Nothing. Well, I've been out of my mind with worry ever since I got your call. Oh, how stupid of me. No, there's nothing wrong. But I may have a little disappointment for you. You're not going to give him his transfer. Now, he insisted that he wanted to stay here with us. You talked him out of it. I had nothing to do with it. He came to me. You must have persuaded him. He asked me to cancel the transfer himself. I asked you here today because I had a feeling he hadn't discussed it with you. No, he hadn't discussed it with me. I don't see enough of him to discuss anything. Oh, I hate what he does, what you make him do. You don't seem to realize how important his work is. No, I don't. And I never will. I mean, he can't talk to me. He's not allowed to. I don't see him for days at a time, sometimes even weeks. Well, I'm not suggesting it's easy for you. Look, I'm not just being selfish, you know. A home and a family and a quiet, peaceful life, it's much more than that. I know how much you dislike his security work, and I know how much of a strain it is for you, but well, after all it was, you were rather your father who got him into it. Look. This is your husband's personal file. A splendid record showing how valuable he is to this country. Words, Victor. I read them in the papers and I don't believe them. Splendid record, great value to his country. They're just a lot of stupid, boring phrases without any depth or sincerity. Let me ask you something. Without Peter and men like him, how many people do you think could have homes and families and calm, peaceful lives? There isn't any other way. You believe that? You really believe that? I have to. To do my job, I have to. You could give Peter a transfer, even against his wishes. You could. I'm sorry. I have no choice. I need him. I see.
What would you like, sir? Oh, a pot of coffee, please. Anything to eat with it? No, just a cup of coffee, thank you. Certainly, sir. Excuse me, is this seat in, please? Uh, no, I'm expecting right. view from here. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, so sorry. May I see the menu, please? It's under your hat, it... sir. Oh, yes, yes, I see. I'm sorry. Excuse me, sir. I wonder if you'd be so kind. What kind of food is this? Oh, it looks like something on toast. Thank you. Why didn't Scherner come himself? It was too dangerous, but I can take you to him. I'm sure you can, but you're not telling me why I should trust you. My friend is afraid for his life. I am taking great risk in coming here myself. I was expecting something more than that. Mr. Donovan, I have no more. A little faith, please. My friend is terrified. Only you can help him. I had this idea he was going to help me. Nothing is free. You should know that. Europe has grown too small for my friend. The United States is a large country. Man may lose himself easily. What do you want? I'm a simple man, too old for travel now. A little comfort, that is all I require. Miss? Yes, but I'm not paying for this bill. Where is Shona now? In a warehouse in the East India Docks. You can be more specific. I'm going to get the manager. And, and I have a sound, I believe, it's Did that deliberately? It is nothing. You cut. I can tell you one thing. Yes, Mr. Donovan. My friend has suddenly... He cannot tell to... anyone. driving very fast, sir. Well, within the limits, officer. May I see your driving license, sir? I am in a hurry. I... Yes, sir, I can see that.
What's the number of your car, sir? 766 GLK. If you don't mind, sir. No, I object to that. Then you can come down to the station and have alternative tests there. Coming round. Yeah, quite the doctor, my dear. Ammonium carbonate. Anybody knows that? I do not know it. But then I am not anybody. Wake up, Mr. Donovan. Wake up. You're a long way now from that little tea party in the festival hall. Do I get something to drink? Oh, of course, of course. Donetta. Anything to make you comfortable. To ease the vocal cords. We like the sound of your voice, Mr. Donovan. And you are going to talk to us, aren't you? I suppose that's why I'm all dolled up like a Christmas tree. Somebody pushes a button and it's happy holiday. We expect you not to be helpful, naturally. <sighs> naturally. I'm glad you take it in such good part. But you must not make the mistake of assuming that we are light-hearted, easy-going people, Mr. Donovan. I couldn't make that mistake. The wires are connected to your head, your heart and your kidneys. The agony will be far greater than anything you could imagine. Uh, but is all this necessary, I wonder? Now, look, there is a man, a go-between, called uh, Ludwig Heiner, and he has a friend called Emil Schoener. Oh, Schoener we find and stop, but Heiner eludes us. In time, of course, we find him too. But then I begin to wonder, who is he going to meet at the festival hall? And uh, lo and behold, Mr. Donovan, you walk in. What did Heiner say to you? What was so important that you were sent to London? Simple questions. Easy. Do we really need this barbaric form of persuasion? The man I came to see was Scherner. The man I met said nothing. He had no time. But we have all the time in the world. Lundgren. Mr. Shevick is expecting me. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Lundgren has arrived. He's got your telex. Lundgren is here. Leave him until I bring the doctor down. Did you hear? I've never had occasion to avail myself of your services before, Doctor. They tell me you're very reliable. Well, frankly, I'm rather nervous. I've been a courier on occasion and done a few other small jobs, but I've never actually worked in the field before. I like honesty. The man without nerves does not exist. I've been living on mine for years. I always ask myself when they will wear out. <laughs> but not today, eh? 
Oh, why did you send for me? We have to send somebody abroad. In that? It has been tested before. The oxygen there emits sufficient air at intervals below the control box, and the ventilation is concealed in the scenes. There and there. Is this a willing passenger? Uh, hardly. No, drugs will be necessary. A six-hour minimum, at least. Uh, let us say eight hours to be on the safe side. Why else do you think I asked you to bring your emergency case? You did bring it, didn't you? Oh, yes. Oh, don't look so apprehensive, my dear doctor. A few minutes' work, and you will be back again in your respectable practice. from here is particularly good. Something's wrong. I can't get any response out of him. Tell me about this. Did I have to? I suppose you want him to get to the end of his journey alive. He must answer questions first. We'd be lucky if he ever talks again. I don't even know whether I can give him drugs. But you've got to. Do you know the effect of the drugs on heart and brain? You may have weakened him so much, the smallest dose may kill him. All right, give me a hand. Wake up. Wake up. Some coffee. Wake up. Oh. Coffee. How are you feeling? Too much sugar. I told you it'd be all right. He'd tell us, you know. I could make him. We're in the doctor's hands, my dear. We want your friend to be fit for travel now, don't we? going abroad. Nothing permanent, I hope. I'm sure it won't last long. Oh, uh, special collection, sir. It'll be out in a minute. Very cold day, sir. What <laughs> you say your name was? Lundgren. I'm Dr. Lundgren. How many times have I got to tell you? Roll up his sleeve. Now, this won't hurt a bit. Come to get you. Your timing's pretty good. I almost felt that needle. Right, we'll leave you. 
How are we going to get through those gates? You see those dogs? You just go through that door and meet me at the garage. Easy, Governor. You make it? I'll try. Take the trunk out now. But I haven't got the telegram. They must have taken it from me. I was out at the police station. Look, this will prove who I am. A letter, a driving license. Why are you so suspicious? You sent for me. Dr. Langren arrived last night. The man! Come with me. Move that to the side. Turn back in here. Hey, will you make up your blinking mind? Stop that refuse line. I think we'll give Mr. Shevick his machine back. Hey, 
good indeed, Mr. Donovan. Do you do any rough shooting? Only people. Bring Donovan in. Stop waving that thing around, Kitteridge. I've been wondering about Kitteridge. Just the thing for a day like this. And we'll need another goblet. By the way, you'll be meeting Peter Langley again. I hope a little more formally this time. Will the Colonel drive you home? Yes, oh, Kitteridge. Thank you. When do I see you then? It's beginning to sound like a martyr. Maybe I have the right to feel like one. Peter? I'm late. You are going to ask him, aren't you? I can't talk about it now. Just yes or no? All right, yes, if that satisfies you. I've already applied for the transfer. I'll ask him about it again. You think you can say anything to me, don't you? What does that mean? And I'll believe every word. The Colonel told you to forget about the transfer. That's the truth, isn't it? No, of course it isn't. He told me so himself, Peter. Don't interfere. I won't tell you again. I won't be there to tell. I have the wine imported from the Cabernet Chauvignon. Did you know that Bordeaux has been drunk in England since the middle of the 12th century? That's what I'd call a bender. Ah, good. Why, well, hello, Peter. How are you? Once we'd winkled you away from Shevick, I sent Langley back to do a little house cleaning. They're all gone, of course, except the blasted dogs. They left them locked up in the garage. I ran so fast, I fell over my own feet and strained my wrists. I thought the English were dog lovers. Oh, yes, we are, but not other people's. Oh, yes, the other people. Where are they now? I suppose they're all over the place. The genuine Dr. Lundgren was spotted in Tangier. Yes, we um, scattered them. Pity, in a way, it was rather a good arrangement knowing where Shevick's headquarters were. Still. The man you came to meet, Emile Scherner, was one of our best European information sources. You say was? His body was found in a warehouse at East India Docks. The man you did meet, Karl Heiner, was really very harmless. A goat between, nothing more. Uh, quite a respectable stamp dealer, as a matter of fact. I'm quite sure he couldn't have told you anything. I don't disagree with that. Now, the question is this. Why does Scherner, reliable, trusted, and incidentally very well paid by us, why does he bring you to Europe? What has he got to say to you that he can't say to us? You tell me. Frankly, you're an embarrassment. We know who you are, so does Shevick. Our police want to question you about that festival hall affair. And the man you came so far to meet is permanently unavailable. Tell us what persuaded you to meet Scherner. I mean, you must have had something to interest you in the first place. I didn't tell that to Shevick either. Well, we mustn't press Mr. Donovan. He has a journey to make. Am I going someplace? Yes, to New York via Rome. A diplomatic request from your embassy. My chauffeur will take you to the air terminal and hand you over to one of your embassy officials. I'll see you out. Have you ever felt rejected? I'll cheer up and have a nice flight. You can't win them all, you know. Well, that's that. Yes. Indeed. Sir. Aren't you coming with me? Colonel said only as far as the terminal, sir. Or were you told to see me off properly? No, sir. Mr. Donovan? Yes? I have full details about you, sir. Well, sir, I can see you're in very good hands. Your coach leaves in nine minutes for the 3.30 flight from London Airport to Rome by BEA. This is Mr. De Brossman from your embassy, sir. What did you do, Donovan? Gate crash Buckingham Palace. It'll be a long time before they let you in Britain again. You haven't much time, sir. 
Here are your plane tickets. Thank you. I have a letter of instructions in the office. Would you come with me, please? Get your coat off, Carson. Now, wait a minute. Come on, I didn't have much time, and this is all I could think up. What is this? You and Carson here changed places. Why? Your job's not finished here yet. Look, I'm just doing what they told me. Now, here's your letter of instructions. I'm going with Carson to see him on the plane. You wait here a few minutes after we've left, go out that door, turn right, and make your way down to the main exit. But my cover's down. What good am I? I don't know anything about it, and I don't want to know. Just read the letter. Who's it from? Now, how should I know? All I know is I'm putting you on a plane for Rome. Carson, put your collar up. Do something. Keep blowing your nose. I'm engaged. You're for hire. I'm sorry, lady. I can't. I've got a fare, you see. I've got... Brosnan was good at the air terminal. And just as well. One of Shevick's boys was waiting for me. I know. What do you mean you know? Of course you know. The idea was for everyone to think I was on my way to Rome. That's one of the ideas. British security knows about me. Shevick knows about me. I have no cover, so I'm no good to you, to me, or to anyone. Take it easy. You know your trouble, my boy? You're brain heavy. What's that supposed to mean? That's a compliment. Kind of. You think so much, you can't work things out for yourself. I'm a born follower. Someone's giving away or selling top priority information in London. Scherner knew who it was. We sent you to listen. He's dead. End of mission. Or until we find another Scherner. Wrong. Redmayne deports you and has you driven to London Air Terminal. Why do you think I sent you there instead of the airport itself? Only three people knew beside myself and Dubrosman. Redmayne, Kitteridge, and Langley. Of course, the man could have been there by accident. I don't believe that. Neither do you. No, I guess I don't. I went to start on Langley to check him out. Remember, he got me away from Shevick. I know, he's still suspect. Be objective, my boy. Hasn't it occurred to you that Shevick doesn't know the man we're looking for? How many men do you know in the CIA or the Pentagon? Uh, the man we're after looks like being a sleeper. Planted in British security years ago. Oh, but Shevick should know. Look how he was tipped off at my being at the terminal. Shevick takes orders, that's all. He's a field man. You imagine Burgess and McLean knew about Philby. You think Philby would trust them with that kind of secret? Would Langley work against his own people? To save himself, of course he would. Or Redmayne would give an order, or Kittredge would do some desk planning. Remember, I've seen this before. We had the Rosenbergs in the States, you know. What are you trying to say to me? When people change their allegiance, they stop being American or British, or even Russian for that matter. They just become somebody's enemies, period. What about Langley? We happen to know that Langley and his wife have been having some trouble. We've arranged a meeting for you. That's Mrs. Langley. Nice looking, isn't she? Yes, isn't she? What sort of meeting? There's a kid's boating lake in Regent's Park. She takes her boy there on occasions. Oh, that sort of meeting. Today's one of those occasions. It's all arranged for you. Just be there. Four minutes, boat's ready. Here we are, then.
silly boy. Oh, thank you so much. All right, which hand is it in? Wrong. You want to try it again? Yes. Okay. Now. You've got it. What are you two up to? Oh, Michael and I are getting to know each other. Aren't we, Michael? Come on, Mommy. <sighs> All right. Your trousers will be ready in a minute. Will you do it tomorrow? Well, do what? Go for a bottle. I've got a better idea than that, Michael. How would you like to show me around the zoo? Come on, Mommy, can I? I don't know, darling. I'm not really sure we're free tomorrow. No, Michael and I would love to go to the zoo. Wouldn't we, Michael? Yes. I'm a vice president with a publishing firm in Washington. Vice president? Very impressive. Not really. There are about 150 vice presidents in the company. If I live to be 140, I might become chief vice president. How's your thing, Pa? Terrible. That's the chief vice president. until the right moment. I don't want to hurt you. I wish I knew what you did want. What are you doing, Dean? What are you doing? Don't throw these away. I didn't think they meant anything anymore. Obviously. That holiday was a long time ago. Well, is that any reason to just throw them away? Peter, what's happened to us? Crying out loud. We don't have to go through that again, do we? Well, why are you leaving? Because we're not living the sort of life that I want to live. Well, maybe I'm not the kind of person that you want to live with. Well, maybe. Incidentally, the flat is paid for a year in advance. I've left some money for you in the bedroom. I'm sure you're quite used to doing that. And as far as the flat is concerned, you can keep it. That's up to you. Well, where will I reach you? I'll drop in and pick up my mail. Hello. It's Michael Donovan. Oh, hello, Mr. Donovan. We have a date, remember? Yes, yes, of course I remember. You still haven't told me what you're doing in London. Just wheeling and dealing. Aha, which means what exactly? Maybe buying a piece of one of your publishing houses here? Oh. Is that a wombat or a porcupine? Neither. It's bird. When do you go back? Yesterday. Actually, I was all finished yesterday. A bird? I forgot to tell you. It's a three-legged bird. A slight oversight. Won't um, anyone be expecting you? I told them something new would come up.
My mother was Italian and my father Irish. They yell at each other all day and made love all night. I guess they were the happiest people I've ever known. Where? Yes, my mother died. She was killed in an automobile accident. People do die of broken hearts. I guess they really do. Is that why you never married? Oh, I've been near it. Sounds like once bitten, twice shy. I've got teeth marks all over me. You do remember I'm married, don't you? I've been thinking a great deal about it lately. You don't talk very much about him, do you? There's so much to talk about. Once I started, I'd never stop. I'm a good listener. Yes, you are, aren't you? I've never known anyone who concentrates as hard as you do. You're a very intense person, aren't you? It depends on how interested I am. How interested are you? Oh, I'm concentrating very hard. Oh, let's take a taxi. Let's take the bus. This is better. Oh. Ah, well. Maybe I shouldn't tell you this, but the bus is headed in the wrong direction. I don't care. You're a nut. Stop raving mad. We can always find a cab. Oh, no, no, you're stuck. Even if the last stop is Edinburgh, that's where we're going. Oh, I'm just trying to imagine you in a kilt. Oh, as a matter of fact, me needs are not so bad. Yes, please. Oh, yes, yes. I've got some change. No, well, I'll get it. Here you are. Help yourself. Where to? Anywhere. Two to anywhere, then. My treat. Two to the depot. Whatever happened to male supremacy? I always thought that the United States was a matriarchal society. I wouldn't know. I always voted Democrat. Oh. who leaves off the E does so at his peril. You don't have any trouble with your name, do you? No. Michael? Mike? Like my son. Americans have funny names as a rule. Funny? Hmm. Chuck and Butch. Harvey Haystack the third. Only kings and Americans have numbers after their names. Michael Donovan the third. Has a sort of a ring to it. It's Michael A. Donovan. What does the A stand for? It's just a family thing. Aloysius? No, no. Alfred? Oh, go on, tell me. Angelo. Angelo. That's right, you said your mother was Italian. Angelo? Michelangelo? Oh. Well, it could have been worse. She might have called me Benvenuto Cellini. Italian. I suppose you eat potatoes, spaghetti. Only for breakfast. Michelangelo. A sculptor, a painter, and a poet. A man of depth and passion. I don't know about the depth, but I could answer for the passion. Do our bones to go to. La 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 I'm looking for 
Major Colonel Redmayne. I was told he might be here. Colonel Redmayne? Yes, he's inside. Take this gentleman to Colonel Redmayne, sir. Who? Colonel Redmayne. Peter, what are you doing here? I could ask you the same thing. May I? <laughs> I never was quite sure about Kitteridge. How did you know where to find me? Quite easily. Your secretary told me. Black Mark to Windy. But if she told you where I was, you must have made it sound very urgent, wanting to see me. Yes, I did. Uh, shall we go downstairs to the bar? Not so many distractions. No. Well? Is it about Donovan? And your wife? You know. Perhaps we'd better go downstairs. Hurry up, Dave. We'll be late. Two brandies, please. Make them large ones. I suppose it would be stupid to ask how you know. Well, I know that Donovan didn't get that plane to America, if that's what you mean. And he and Anne haven't been exactly discreet. No, they haven't, have they? What's he playing at? I thought the Pentagon had called him back. That was a blind for our security people. What do you mean? We're being screened, Peter. You, me, Kitteridge, the lot of us. Well, that's ludicrous. I've been screened a dozen times. I know. So what's the point? Well, maybe they think that they've overlooked something. That's ridiculous. A fly couldn't get through that net. Or perhaps Heiner did say something to Donovan before he was killed. Look, Heiner had something to sell. He contacts Donovan. Donovan wants to know more about the package before he buys. Heiner may have hinted that someone in our department has been doubling. You mean one of us? I don't mean anything. I'm just guessing. And they're getting at me through Anne? Could be. What are you going to do? Well, I'm not worried about my job, if that's what you mean. No, I mean about Anne. Oh. Well, I've got some leave due. Might be a good idea if I and Anne went on a trip for a week or so. Would that be an order? Or do you think the Pentagon might object? I'll make sure it's an order. Good. I'll see to it then. Thank you for the drink. I like your club. Good night, Peter. Um, Valerie, your uh, lampshade's cooking. Will I see you tomorrow? But you're going back to the States tomorrow. No, they want me to stay over here. That's true. No, but I'm not flying anywhere tomorrow. Seven bob on the clock, Gov. Give a thanks and the best of luck, Gov. Paddington Station tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. I bring Michael with you. Why? I'm going away. Why, well, have a little bit. And I guess we can both use a drink. Now, don't argue with me. Just be there. Where's little Mike? With my sister. Yeah, I'll help you.
You are allowed to remove your coat. I thought you'd never ask. That was Peter on the phone just now. He's staying away for a few days and he wants me to meet him at the station tomorrow. It's terrible when things come to an end. Is it finished? Mm. He cares very much for Michael and I think in his own way he loves me too. What way is that? It's a curious, almost Victorian sort of attitude. You know, the wife in the kitchen and, and he has his own personal business life and we have ours. What does he do? He works for the government. Oh? Mm, civil, civil service. Well, I don't suppose a marriage breaks up because a man doesn't tell his wife what he did at the office all day? No. You're what I call a well-adjusted person. Like a 21-jewel clock. They wind me up in the morning and I unwind at night. Or try to. No, seriously. I bet you'd be the same even if you were chopping down trees or putting up forest fires. Peter's completely different. His work absolutely destroys him. How? I don't know. It's like there's a whole part of him that I can never reach, I can never get to. Were you in the army? No, in the Navy for a while. I met Peter when he was in the army, in Africa. There was so much action there, people killing and hurting each other all the time. I hated it. It's different when it's actually happening all around you, when you really experience it. You and I've just absolutely grown to loathe violence. And when someone attacks you on the street, you have to fight back. I know that argument. Why do they attack you in the first place? Because you're there. Maybe because you're different. Maybe it's the color of your skin. Or you're too ugly or too beautiful. There can be a hundred reasons. You'll never convince me. Peter never could. It's really eating you up, isn't it? Hmm, yes. Is that the reason? Oh, no. No, Peter and I... We sort of... just drifted apart. In the last few months, there hasn't even been any kindness. Is there any kindness left anywhere in the world? Is there? I told you to bring him. I decided not to. Well, who gave you the right to decide? I've told you before, Peter, he's not going to hear us quarreling anymore. I'm not really interested in what you had to tell me. You were going to try and take him with you, weren't you? I thought so. I don't want him mixed up in your kind of life. Oh, really? I mean it, Peter. I mean it, Peter. What is that supposed to mean? I'll tell you what you really mean. You think that Michael is your sole property, yours and yours alone. Well, he isn't, and I don't care what you think. Oh, I know you don't. As a matter of fact, you started to bore me months ago. Well, I had a good teacher. I don't know why you bothered to come. To tell you to leave us both alone. I'm not quite sure what that both means. You mean you and Michael? Of course. Or you and Donovan. Michael Donovan, your recent close companion. You don't want our son mixed up in my kind of life. Do you know what Donovan is? He's a very special American security agent. Dedicated and ruthless. Now, you wouldn't want our son mixed up in... You're lying. Ask him. 
save that for him. Well, I'll call you back. Mr. Donovan? I'm back. You're expected. You come this way? Mr. Donovan's here. Good evening, Donovan. Good evening. Got a red man. I'm just visiting. What is this? I thought I was supposed to check out all three of them. Langley, Kittredge, and the Colonel here. Now, that was my idea. I wanted you to suspect all of us equally. And, of course, I couldn't risk your trying to contact me. What have you got, Donovan? Nothing yet. It's too soon. I don't like the way you work. I prefer to be trusted. I approve the Colonel's plan. Have you read the evening paper? Another traitor. British security organization in danger of collapse. You can't think where they get these stories. It could work for us. It already has. Quite apart from your operation, I've had ordinary surveillance put on both Kitteridge and Langley. They probably think it arises from that article. There's nothing to connect you with it. And Langley's taken three days vacation. I know. His wife saw him off at the station this morning. Yes, he caught that train all right. It was a non-stop. But he didn't get off at the other end. Somehow or other, Peter Langley has completely disappeared. Where do I find Mrs. Langley? She's in the gymnasium. Go through the main entrance and down that corridor. Thank you. Pleasure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Oh, there she is, sir. Three, Over there. Four. Thank you. Can I talk to you for a minute? I don't want to talk to you or see you again. What's the matter? And don't hex me at work. Hold on, Anne. Take your hands off me. All right, girls, take five minutes. Has Peter said something? Yes. He told me that you and he are in the same kind of work. That accidental meeting of ours had a different motive, didn't it? Yes. How expert you are. Do they give you special courses in lovemaking? Anne. I had to check your husband out. Through me? Yes, through you. And what did you tell me? Nothing, not a damn thing. Perhaps you were hoping I'd talk in my sleep. My professional interest in you was finished a week ago. Your husband's gone away. He's disappeared. He's taken some leave, that's all. Sure, to Bristol, but he never arrived there. Look, it stopped being any concern of mine months ago. For God's sake. And if you'd care to take the same route as Peter and disappear forever, that's fine by me. All right, girls, back to work. Would you, um, would you give this to Mrs. Langley, please? Oh, I don't want to bother her. Okay. Oh, thank you very much.
everything all right, miss? Redman. It's for you, Anne Langley. No, nothing new on Peter yet. I'm sorry I shouted at you, Michael. I uh, didn't realize how important this all was. I was just being silly and emotional. Oh, it's all right, I understand. Is there anything I can do to help? I'm going to follow Peter's route. I want you to meet me at the railroad station tomorrow morning at 8.45, the same platform where you last saw him. If you can do that, fine. I'd not take it easy, Anne. Bye. Goodbye. Well, now, that wasn't too difficult, was it? You, uh, you're going to help him, are you? They're tracing the way he went. I have to be at the station in the morning. Good, yeah. Now, you let me know everything that happens. How do I contact you? Mm -hmm. I'll, uh, get in touch with you. No need to worry about the boy. Mark is fine. Now, uh, you, uh, you have a nice rest, Mrs. Langley. I would. I'm doing what you want. Now, get out. Get out! All right, all right. Ciao. For the past three years, the theft of electric light bulbs from railway coaches has increased by 3%. And yet, filtering of teaspoons from catering establishments has decreased by 5%. Now, don't worry about it. For the record, you and I are television scriptwriters preparing a documentary on railway vandalism. Well, what about Peter? Well, we know that a train left on time. No stops were scheduled. Here we are. It goes on here. Here. But here something happened. The train stopped for five minutes. But, but why should Peter get off? Well, he either left the train or was taken off. I hope you have some comfortable walking shoes. Yes, I do. Why? You're going to need them. I still haven't figured out why you changed your mind and decided to help me out. I just thought I should. Michael, isn't it? What do you mean? Peter's the boy's father. Yes. Nothing in there. Say, let's look at that house. right here.
circuit. We'll keep you informed. Over and out. Yes, okay. Here! What you doing here? That's what I was thinking, mate. I'm just looking around, that's all. I'm not alone, you know. Go on, off it. Where did you get that watch? Yeah, I no. just want to look at it. Let me have a look. What? <laughs> oh, you judge us! Go, let me go! Oh, here. What do you want? Go, have a look. Here you are. Hi, hi. about these other articles, Mrs. Langley? Does this material resemble the jacket your husband wore that day? Yes. Oh, and the, um, yes, the cufflinks. Uh, I bought them for him. I think that's all, Fenimore. All right, sir. I'll just ask you to sign this form, Mrs. Langley. Then it's over. Yes. Uh, just formally stating that you positively identify these articles uh, for the coroner. Thank you, sir. Can I go now? Yes, of course. There's a car to take you home. I can't tell you how sorry I am about this. Thank you. And I'll call you as soon as I'm through. Those two tramps have nothing to do with Langley's death. They almost had something to do with his wife's death. I was mostly frightened. I've let the police have them now. Where's your Mr. Kittredge? Well, he's been transferred to cable coding for a few days. Simple stuff, nothing restricted. I've sent for him. You really want him to run? Yes. We weren't friends, but we worked closely together. He must have laughed at us concentrating so hard on Langley when all the time we should have been looking at him. You have no proof? That's one reason why I should like to see him run. The other would be a great personal pleasure in watching him get just so far.
finishes it. Who killed him? Sherrick. Or one of his people. Why? He'd served his purpose. Maybe. Why didn't they just smuggle him out of the country? Maybe he'd lost his nerve. Possibly. Well, it finishes Kitteridge, anyway. You can go home now. Uh, thank you. But uh, being an obstinate man, I wouldn't expect you to leave right away. Incidentally, give my regards to Anne Langley, won't you? I am supposed to know what goes on, you know. What are you going to do now? I'll be going away for a few days. Are you taking the boy? Yes. Where is Michael? With my sister. Are they going to give you a new assignment, Little? Yeah, but I don't have to take it. I don't see how you and I can just walk away from each other, Anne. Or maybe it is a bit too soon. But love is a very special thing to me. I've got to let it go. It means too much. Does it? No, I mean that, Anne. I hope you believe me. Look, I said terrible things to you the other day, and I'm really sorry. But this work that you do, it destroys Peter and me. There are other things I can do. I guess it is a bit too soon, isn't it? It's getting really late, and I've got to pick Michael up. Can I run you there? No! I rented a car. Oh, no. No, it's all right. It's not far. You do want to get rid of me. You identified my things. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? The tragic widow. They didn't by any chance give you my watch, did they? Well, how kind. Peter. Oh, we don't want to argue about it, do we? No, quite frankly, I don't give a damn whether you stay or go. I've done what you wanted. Everybody believes you're dead. I do not deny that, but in time the truth will emerge. But you'll have escaped by then. We like to arrange these things to the maximum advantage, Mrs. Langley. What do you mean? Huh. One security man disappears. Scandal. A whole family disappears. Scandal plus doubt. You will be a famous woman when this is all over, Mrs. Langley. 
Peter, for the last time, do whatever you want, but leave Michael out of it. There's no choice. I don't want you to come with it. It's their idea. It was quite a revelation, Mrs. Langley, to discover that your husband was one of us. <laughs> for a time, he had appeared to be quite effectively against us. Why, for some time, I had information and even orders from him. I'm not interested. I wish to make it clear to you that we are all of us obeying a higher authority. It is no good protesting. And who knows? Perhaps one day they will let you come back to England. With my son? The boy stays with me. No! 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 Stop that! No trouble, please, Mrs. Langley. We don't want the boy to have an accident now, do we? That's right, Art. You understand? Mm, just another form of persuasion. Just forget it. <coughs> Half enough, darling? All right, Danetta, cut it out. Save it till later. Mm, nobody's hurting her. Not until we are safely away, eh, Fenner? Mm. Danetta, I'm going ahead. I hope you are a good sailor, Mrs. Langley. It's not hell we're going to, you know. It's just another country. Just going for a boat ride. I suggest you throw that over here. is to be left alone to get into my boat. That's not too much to ask for life, is it, Donovan? Your life? Anne, get into the boat. Leave her out of this. Oh, I wanted to. All I wanted was to take my son with me. You're not going anywhere. Now, don't be foolish. Thank <laughs> you. 